Roots here. Alright, today is um, the 5th of September. As I record these, this will probably go up like, um, I don't know, let's see, probably the 8th of September. So, um, today is the um, season opener for the NFL. So, it's a big day. That means this coming Sunday, which is about the time this will be posted, um, they'll have the first full Sunday of uh, NFL games. So, with that in mind, uh, I thought I'd um, show off a box of cards that I um, actually already opened. But Auto, so it was fun to get um, 
you know, the top uh, North Dakota related football player in an autograph and number to 50 is pretty cool. So, um, there you go. Easton stick. Um, um Debo Samuel. Receiver for the uh, Giants. Looks like there's a football. And then, like, jersey patch. And sticker auto. This is number 299. Pretty cool looking card. And there's uh, Andrew Luck here. Um, recently retired. As uh, many of you who follow football will know. Um, he decided to uh, call it quits very early in his career. Due to just... Um, too many injuries and I guess just being, you know, tired with dealing with all that. I know a lot of people were pretty sad about that because he was a really great young player. But I kind of say, hey, good for him, you know, to know when to call it quits and frankly to probably, you know, help his brain and body out a lot. Um, so... I say congratulations, Andrew Luck. Um, here's a Brian Urlacher. Um, this is number 225. Uh, Can I see it there? So that's a pretty cool card. He's a good player. So there you go. There's a box of um, absolute uh, football. Not a lot of cards in that product, but... So I would say that's like a, a B-plus box for me. Um, all right, so let's talk about this. This is the main, the main event. Um, this is a box of 1985 tops. And um, one thing I did recently is I sent in to the Baseball Card Exchange, um, which is a, a company that sells unopened uh, sports card products, more than just baseball despite their name. And um, one thing they also do is they authenticate um, boxes of sports cards. And I'm just looking around. Yeah, okay, I might show you an example of an authenticated box. But basically, how it works is you will send them in. And they're, they're one of only maybe two companies that do that. And, and they have like 99% of the market share. So um, they're pretty much the gold standard for authenticating um, unopened boxes of sports cards. So what you do is you send them in, um, you know, your unopened boxes, and um, they'll they'll look at them, and if they decide that, what they do is they look at the packs, and they, well, you know, I keep hitting this thing, um, they, they look at the packs, and if they deem them to be unopened, you know, 36 of them unopened, then um, they'll, they'll, they'll wrap your box in a special wrap, and then they put like a sticker on the bottom of the wrap, not on the box. Um, and it, you know, just says the year and the sport, and um, and that they authenticated it, and you get and there's a little, little hologram sticker on it. Um, so that's the process. So I sent in like about I don't know, like 15 boxes. I have a ton of unopened stuff, and I've never sent in anything before. But um, I thought it would make sense because it's relatively inexpensive. Um, I think they charge like eight percent of the value of the box and the value is determined by their like buy price which is actually a lot lower than than sort of retail value so it ends up not being all you know all that expensive and you know the the value of the box goes up significantly if you have it authenticated so it's a good thing to do um and you know just sort of having it wrapped up like that keeps it safe and it's it's I don't know. I, I'm surprised I haven't done it sooner, and I will probably send in a lot more stuff, especially because unopened sports cards, especially baseball, are getting actually every sport. Um, but I, I pay a little more attention to baseball. But anyways, stuff has been getting just really um, uh, valuable and expensive. So a lot of the stuff I have, you know, I've had, I've had for 20, 30 years, um, is is beginning to be quite valuable, and so sending it in kind of helps you uh, maintain that value and also the longer you wait um, the more it'll cost you know to get it authenticated so better do it 
sooner than later. So, all right, in any event, uh, I sent about 15 boxes. All but one came back as authentic. This one came back um, as possibly not authentic. Basically, they said that they looked at the, um, what they do is, I'll, I'll kind of open this up. This is kind of a, a rare box. It's, um, these are, um, uh, no price packs, or no, sorry, no year packs. Normally, they would have the 1985, um, on the, on the pack there, but, but some did not get that, and these are some of those. So anyways, what they do basically is they look at the, um, the way that the, um, the wax pack is sealed on the back. Um, and they look at like sort of the roller marks and there are, you know, generally consistent roller marks on products that are um, sealed, you know, by tops in a particular year. So they sort of know what they look like. And if they don't look like that, then they won't um, authenticate it. And what I was told was that, you know, this could be a situation where the rollers at tops were just um, sort of wonky, you know, for a particular run or whatever. So they looked a little different, but um, you know, they just could sort of err on the side of, of, of caution and, and will not, um, authenticate something that they're not 100% sure about. So, um, you know, I said, fair enough, that's cool. Uh, and, and actually, I will say they were kind enough not to charge me because their rules are that they charge you for, um, you know, non-authentication as, as well as authentication because it's still taking their time and effort so I do really appreciate that they did that and then and that was some um, super cool I thought um, so this box this is this the value of this box is about three hundred dollars um, I probably paid like 50 or 60 bucks or something like or maybe 80 bucks for it like 20 years ago I, I was buying up this stuff a lot a long time ago and um, just been sitting around so Anyways, I thought I would just open these some of these up and see what we get and see if I can kind of, um, you know, determine. You see where the thing is ripped there? That's not a great sign. I mean, it's not necessarily an indication that he's been tampered with, but when you, when you unfold these things and then fold them back up, you know, it creates wear and they will tear sometimes. So that's, that's not a great sign. Um, there's some gum, so definitely some legit gum in there. Um, so we'll see. I mean, if there's absolutely, I mean, if there's like a Mark McGuire in here, then I don't think there's any chance these things were tampered with because that would have been pulled like the first thing. Um, so these cards are in really nice shape, very sharp corners. The centering is not great, although this one, this one has really nice centering. That's actually a really sharp card. Of course, you know, it's a common, but... There's Jose Rio. He was a really good young pitcher. Um, I believe he came up with the uh, the Reds after a short stint with the Yankees. There's the the, the wax uh, stain or the uh, gum stained card. Really did a number on this guy, Jerry Martin. So there's Carlton Fisk, Hall of Famer. Well, nothing good in that one, but that means absolutely nothing. I'm just going to maybe keep opening these until I get the sense that there's clearly no stars in here, in which case this is probably a tampered box. Um, and this one, look at that, not even sealed very well. Um, the only other time I've gotten something that I've, I, I know was definitely, um, resealed packs was I ordered some 82 tops and ordered like a partial wax box from some, somebody on eBay. And, uh, I actually did not open them. There's a U.S. baseball team. That's what the McGuire card looks like. I did not open them for many years after I bought them. So I didn't even realize that they were, um, messed with until much later and it was too late to do anything about it then but um yeah the cards were clearly uh, messed with in that stuff um and uh um the 
there was actually a Cal Ripken Jr. rookie card in one of the packs I pulled, and you're saying, oh, well, then they must not have been tampered. But it was like, it was like a wax-stained card in, like, the middle of the pack. <laughs> so what they had done is, you know, put in kind of a, a decoy, you know, rookie card that was really damaged, didn't have any value, but maybe it made you think that all of these hadn't been messed with, but because it was in the middle of the pack, and it had wax on it. it. It was definitely inserted in there by somebody other than Tops. And that's how I knew. And there were a couple of other examples of that in um, the packs that I opened from that box. So, there's some Hall of Famer Steve Carlton. There's a Hall of Famer Ryan Sandberg, All Star card. Hall of Famer Mike Schmidt, All Star card. Oh, look at that. There's a wax-stained Carlton Fisk card. A lot of Carlton Fisk action in this, in this, uh, in these few packs I've opened. So, you know, not horrible so far. Definitely some stars, but the cards you'd be looking to pull out of here if you were, um, kind of tamper with these cards, um, would be the, you know, Roger Clemens, um, Kirby Puckett, Dwight Gooden. Although, you know, Dwight Gooden, back back in uh, 85, 86, 87, Dwight Gooden was like one of the hottest players on earth. So if, if these were uh, tampered with, oh, there's a nice Corey Snyder rookie card. If these were tampered with back then, then the Gooden would be gone. But maybe not necessarily the uh, Mark McGuire, although he, he, he was hot in 1987 when he set... Um, he set the uh, the record for most home runs in a season by a rookie. And then he kind of um, got super hot again when he went on like a big home run tear. When he was battling uh, Sammy Sosa for the home run crown. And then his stuff was, and that was like 98 I think. Um, and then his stuff was just crazy hot. Rolly Fingers, Hall of Famer. I remember those, uh, 80, 85 tops, um, draft, or, uh, US, Team USA, there's a Hall of Famer, I hope it, the 85 tops, um, USA Baseball Team card of Mark McGuire. Boy, some of these are not sealed tight at all. So I definitely have my suspicions at this point. But uh, back in 98, when Mark McGuire was, like, setting the record for most home runs in a single season, his cards were just, oh, there's a nice Tony Gwynn, just on fire. That 85 Tops rookie card was worth, like, 100, 150 bucks. Fernando. Fairly valuable. Oh, Cam Boyd. 
the seal here. And yeah, I think I think these things were probably tampered with. Not very tight folds. That's another kind of sign. I sent this one in, I thought it was probably the most likely um, one of the group to come back not legit, but I thought it would be good to confirm for sure. Um, and I actually, I feel like now I'm pretty, I feel like I'm pretty well educated on, you know, the signs of tampering and what, what uh, you know the pack should look like on some of these uh, mid 80s products so I feel like I'd probably do a good job of um, of uh, being able to tell when a box has been tampered with or when packs have been tampered with so that's good I mean it's valuable information to know so I can kind of take a look at boxes I might be thinking about opening, assuming I buy them in person, which is a, a rare thing these days. Um, I do have some, like, really, really high-end boxes that are worth, like, thousands of dollars, like, um, 1986 Topps Football. I have a wax box of that. I have a box of 1980 Topps Baseball, which is when I got it, it was worth like maybe six or seven hundred dollars. That was maybe like, I don't know, ten or twelve years ago. Um, now it's worth like two thousand um, dollars. And so what I did, I also have a box of 88 Fleer Basketball, which I picked up off eBay for like stupid cheap back. Jeez, that was, that was a long time ago. That was like fifteen or twenty years ago that I bought that. But um, so anyways, with all of those boxes I just mentioned, what I did is I, I picked a pack, I picked like the cleanest pack I could find in the box and I mailed it in to a PSA who does offer um, individual pack authentication and they'll encapsulate the card in a plastic holder. And actually the PSA sends those, those packs to Baseball Card Exchange and the same guy who did these boxes would look at the packs Sorry about that camera bump. Um, so anyways, I did that, and all my packs came back um, legit. And uh, most of them were like PSA 8s or 9s. It's sort of weird, the grading of packs, I think, because, like, who really cares what the pack looks like? It's what the cards inside look like. Um, so anyways... Um, I have those boxes, and then I have, you know, one pack from each of them that's been graded. But now I kind of want to send in the whole, um, now I was remembering, I was going to finish that thought. Now, now I want to send in the whole box just to get that wrapped, and so I probably will do that, but I'm hoping they might be willing to, like, break the packs out of their, uh, cases for me and put it back in the box, and then... Um, you know, wrap the whole box, but I'm not sure if they'll do that. Anyways, what I was going to say is, I was just remembering on the, um, 1982, uh, packs that I opened, another thing that told me they were definitely tampered with, with, was that they had, like that Ripken, they had, there was other cards that were in the middle of the pack, and they had wax stains, which is impossible because the wax stains come from being on the edge of the pack and getting um, wax on them when the sealing of it happens. So, um, if you get a wax stain in the middle of the pack, which is why I'm starting to look at the back of these, see if they did that, you know you've got a dud. And I have to say, um, I'm, I'm starting to feel very confident that these packs were tampered with because a lot of them are opening um, a little bit too easily. Um, the worn corners, the uh, not terribly tight seals, and the total lack of any of the major hits. As we've gotten through half a box, I would have expected to have at least one of um, Gooden, the Puckett, Clemens. We're getting a lot 
lot of these USA cards, but not any of the McGuire's. So I'm nearly certain that this box has been tampered with, and I will be not surprised if we do not get any of the major hits in this entire thing, which would certainly confirm it, because with like four possible cards being the, you know, the big hits, not getting a single one of them is virtually impossible. Um, so yeah, so, you know, lesson learned on this one. You know, I think these days, um, eBay is so protective of their buyers that I think you'd feel, I mean, if you knew what you were doing and you felt like you could tell relatively, you know, easily the, um, legitimate, like whether a box, um, of cards was legitimate or not, um, I think you'd, you'd probably feel pretty safe ordering something. And then if it looked like it was, um, tampered with, you know, just re requesting a, a refund, um, although it's interesting because, you know, I mean, I mean, I get, well, you could probably, you know, you can figure it out without opening it. And honestly, if you open like a ton of packs and then say it's tampered with you, so I feel like you've surrendered your ability to complain because, you know, um, there's no, there's no like putting those packs back to, to the condition they were in. So I don't know. I feel like, but, but, you know, again, you should be able to tell without opening any packs, whether something has been tampered with. So, um, you know, if you order something online and you can give it a good examination and then return it, um, if it's tampered with and ask for a refund, I would think you'd be pretty safe in doing that, given how eBay really protects their, the buyers a lot more than the sellers. <coughs> Excuse me. I especially think this is true because, um, you know, if they've, if they're selling resealed packs, I mean, they may not have done it themselves, but if they did, it's basically fraud. Um, like it's a crime. So yeah, this is definitely a um, tamper box with a bunch of resealed trash in it. Although, you know, there's a fair amount of Hall of Famers. Um, so that's nice. And, you know, frankly, I when I bought this box, I, I paid so little for it. I probably, again, I probably paid like 80 or $90 at most for it, you know, and that was 20 years ago. So, um, you know, not a lot, lot, not a lot lost in that. If I, if I bought this today and I paid 300 bucks for it, um, you better bet there'd be some hell to pay. But that's not the case, and you know, I kind of, I kind of, I get a lot of enjoyment out of opening this old stuff, even if there's no stars in it, because it's still fun to see a lot of these cards for me. So I'm not too, uh, I'm not too worried about it. You know, it's a, uh, it's, it's the gamble you take buying unopened stuff. Another John Marzano. Um, at least back in the wild, wild west days before they had BBC E great stuff and authenticate. Uh, a lot of these packs are just not even not even holding together. I mean there's not even like an Eric Davis rookie card in here. Or like an Oral Hershiser, so they really did a number on these guys. I mean they took out every rookie card of any value. That Hojo used to be valuable at, at some point, but these were probably tampered with before then, or after that, I mean. Jimmy Key, rookie. He was a great player for a while there. Obviously, it's just tons of these uh, USA baseball players. Not a uh, McGuire in sight. And 
a single like Nolan Ryan bass or oh wow they gave me an Alvin Davis look at that fantastic so all right there you go best card not damaged by wax Don Manningly second best probably that weed box uh, you know fair smattering of low grade Hall of Famers not that Robin Young's a low grade Hall of Famer I didn't mean to say that but I just happen to be on his card but like Dennis Eckersley is um Bruce Suter is Harold Baines definitely is a low grade Hall of Famer and then there's a lot of like all stars of the major Hall of Famers like Schmidt and Sandberg Fisk well there you go there you have one um tampered box of 1985 tops for you to enjoy all right hope you guys uh enjoyed that thanks so much for watching catch y'all later have a good one bye